I have some good news. The world of electrified vans is expanding. That's right. And you almost can get one yourself, at least <laughs> what we're talking about here. And that's this. Well, yeah. So uh, this video is pretty much about the new Rivian electric van because up to now, Amazon dominated the Rivian electric van market because they invested in the Rivian. Yep. Rivian delivered many, many events to them. Yep. But now they're expanding availability of these things. But that's not just the only news. I mean, we can talk about pricing on this, sure. but how do they compare against other electric vans? Right now, the electric van industry is just beginning to grow, uh, at least here in the United States. In other countries, it's quite popular, and there's a good reason for that. First of all, you have vehicles that you can drive throughout the city, and you don't have to worry about carbon emissions and whatnot. They're very quiet, and at least with short distance, they're very capable, and they can haul quite a lot. But there are quite a few things that hold them back, which is why you don't see them on large stretches of American highways. Yeah, well, I mean, for you and I, because we, we're not in the delivery business, right? Nope. I mean, we would like one of these potentially for camping, maybe oh, yeah. exploring, um, you know, just turning into a motorhome. But these ranges right now, 161 miles of range for the short version mm -hmm. and 153 miles for the longer version, the larger version, that's not really camping territory. No, no, it really isn't. And, you know, these vehicles really are built for short distance travel. And predictable routes, exactly. right? Exactly, predictable yes. routes. And I've got a guy who's driving one of these who comes by my neighborhood every single day with deliveries. And I did ask him, he wouldn't tell me much, but when I did ask him about it, he said it was the coolest thing he's ever driven and he loves it and blah, blah, blah. We think aesthetically it's very cool. But in addition, this is sort of the future of vans, right? Yeah, and um, so they announced pricing just a couple, several weeks ago. Right. And now we can compare this against Mercedes, Ford. Ford is already on sale, dude. You and I tested the Ford van, what, a year ago That's or more? That's the only large electric van we've actually driven. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, there's Bright Drop, but Bright Drop is currently primarily with FedEx. Mm -hmm. uh, that's General Motors technology that they're using there. Right. And there's, of course, others but still not in the U.S., like, for example, the ProMaster Ram electric yeah. uh, van. So let's dig into this one first. Absolutely. Okay. So, see, one unique feature is that it's now Rivian branded, right? Right. The, if you look at an Amazon van, the very front of it will also say Amazon. Or the little symbol. Yeah, the little it's smile. the smiley symbol on smiley it. Smiley symbol. But now, hey, you, they can even, when you contact Rivian about this, van they can even paint it different colors but most of them could come in white because yes. it's a work truck um, so this these payload numbers are, look decent to me uh, but we'll show you how it compares to some of the others from mercedes and ford um, and then pricing right because that's important uh, well f also you said it's a new chassis right yep. i mean it's a dedicated chassis it for is this van. specifically built to be an electric van so we'll talk about the other vans that are out there right now that were not built initially to be electric vans. But the good thing about this Rivian van and also the Bright Drop van, actually I experienced that van a little bit. Uh, here's what one looks like on the inside. It feels like a Silverado. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it doesn't feel like a box van that's built out of aluminum, you know, with a hard seat and like really uncomfortable right. environment. They feel now like true pickup trucks, very, very comfortable seats, Lots of space and lots of amenities as well. Well, that's exactly what you want when you're going to be doing, you know, sitting on your butt half the day and you want someone who doesn't go through fatigue to be able to deliver packages and not, I don't know, crash into people. So th these are very logical uh, setups that they have. And this looks like the same thing, like a Rivian R1T van or R1S. This interface look very almost identical. Right, right. So that's pretty nice. Now, the Rivian van uh, comes either with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Am I correct? I think these ones are only front wheel drive. Uh -huh. But the ones that are being used by Amazon do have that option. I'm not sure, do they? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Um, and then they have two different wheelbases as well. Yeah. So these numbers, 500 and 700, they have to do with the volume. But here's the starting price, 83K, dude, whoa. Whoa, that is a lot of dough for what is essentially a box on wheels and a battery. Yeah, and uh, this longer one is 87 thousand dollars to start uh, by the way according to this website 
what you see is what you get. So there is a partition behind the driver, which is very important. So you're not listening to <laughs> bang, 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 bang. You know, all yeah. the boxes banging behind you. So, and of course, unique door. So this was purpose built, right? Yep. Little slide up door, lights. It's a and fairly all that stuff. low load in as well, uh, unlike some of the competitors, which are kind of high. Uh, that's a very interesting interior shot. Look at they, what they did with the flat pieces of metal here in order to probably enhance their strength by adding these interesting divots in them. Yeah, it looks like a golf ball to me. It does indeed. A little bit. And this also looks narrow, but I don't think it's especially narrow. No. It just appears because it's so tall, um, just a kind of a illusion, I think. I would agree with that. So. I bet you guys are wondering, well, I want one of these. How can I get one? Okay. Yeah. Well, right now, you kind of have to be a business. Yeah. Um, so, as of today, there is another announcement that Rivian made. AT&T purchased a bunch of these vans. That's right. So, now we have Amazon. Now we have AT&T, uh, larger fleets. I reached out to Rivian and I said, can I buy one? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we're going to prioritize larger fleets first. Right. And then in 2025, more of these vans will be available. So... Maybe small businesses like a flower shop or a plumber, you know, something like this will be able to buy one. They also offer software integration, which means fleet management, right? So if you have a dispatch service, you know, in, the, in your main office, um, you can monitor all the vans moving around. Ford does that as well. Yes, Ford is big on that because their fleet is enormous yeah, for Ford. Yeah, ginormous. So the answer is, if you're wondering... Can I build an RV out of one of these? Well, sure you can. However, you're going to have to wait a little while. So right now, you may have to call Amazon and be like, do you have any used ones? Yeah, good, you... luck. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, but what may have to happen in the future to make one of these even remotely capable as an RV van type setup is larger battery because just 200 miles is not enough. And then, of course, you would have to get something that goes through another company in order to lay it out, right? Winnebago or whoever. Or you can build your own like Alex uh, or David. Yeah. You know, they'll probably suppose, build their own thing in there. Yeah, I don't know if I want to take a Sawzall <laughs> to a van I spent eighty or $90,000 on. But, you know, who knows? The point is, is that right now, smaller fleets will eventually be eligible for that and hopefully your business could. But right now, big fleets are the ones who are going to be getting these. And uh, just one more item on the Rivian. This is what the key looks like. Oh, no kidding. You know, so they have a little carabiner for their trucks and SUVs. Yeah. But the, I think this is even better because it can be in your pocket very I, do, I like that better than the carabiner. Uh, all right. So how does this compare? By the way, only 100 kilowatt fast charging on the Rivian. Mm. So it's not super fast charging. No, no, it's not. Especially uh, we do know what Ford's is, and it's slower than Ford's. Yes. So let's look really quickly at Ford. Um, here, Ford has been on sale. The e-transit has been on sale for some months, maybe a year or more. Um, it's a rear-wheel drive setup. Yep. Why are they showing me an engine? Um, that was a <laughs> probably, probably an image that should not be there. Yeah, we'll um, call Ford later. Anywho, I built it with a high roof because about 500 cubic feet, just like the Rivian. Right. And then I also selected uh, partition, adaptive cruise control system, and... Let's see, high resolution digital camera. So after I built this van, which has about 108 miles, so less range than the Rivian. Significantly less. And quicker charging about a 115 kilowatt. Yeah, that is better. The price is, drum roll, 58,740. That is a lot less expensive, but also you're getting a van that has nowhere near the range. Yes. So Ford's argument for this was, first of all, the transit is already around. Yes. They use the chassis or the overall body of an existing van. Right. Then they said most businesses don't need high, high you know, they don't drive a lot of miles. Yeah. So that's what, that was their argument. And it's already on sale. They're selling thousands of these already. Gotcha. But there are other competitors out there as well. Uh, yeah, this is one. Um, we don't have pricing on this yet because yeah. right now big giant companies are buying them. Yeah, but it's loaded with batteries up to 250 miles range. That's the best out of all of so these. So this could be your camper in, of the future, potentially. Yeah, I have a feeling it's not going to be cheap. But uh, this is definitely a vehicle that has already begun to prove itself. It is in production right now, working with FedEx and DHL. And I believe they're looking to expand their sales. I mean, that would make sense. And they do have two different types as well. 
Yeah, uh, they have actually a 400 cubic foot version and 600 cubic foot version. And their payloads are actually not as great. Look at that, 1460 yeah. and 1800 I pounds. wonder if it has to do, well, A, it's lots of batteries. It's big batteries, yes. And also these come standard with all-wheel drive. And also smaller volumes. Yeah, that's so, a good point. So um, not the best. The Ford can have a lot of payload as well. Mm -hmm. And now we need to talk about this. About a blank screen that will come up in a moment. There it is. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's the Mercedes. It's the Mercedes E Sprinter. Uh, actually, I'm, I will have a chance to drive one of these in about a month. Yes. So I'm very excited. And pricing on this is also announced. Payload really good, 2,600 mm -hmm. pounds. And volume is about the same, about 500 cubic feet. Um, this is a motor power. Oh, they even listed the battery size here, 113. This is actually a sizable battery. Yeah, that's a good size battery. And this is European range. Mm -hmm. So don't, this doesn't translate yeah, to yeah, EPA. Yeah, that's WLTP, uh, and that is not going to be what the um, U.S. range will be. Not even I, close. I think I mistyped it. Sorry, that was my typo. Because uh, I, I got it correct there. Really? Because I think I'm the one who wrote this article. Oh, you did? Yeah, that's why it's... I need to yell at you now? Yes, yeah, like yell at me off, off camera. But um, this e-sprinter has the same interior of the regular sprinter, Yeah, right? there's very little difference, really. Um, and that, but that's similar to Ford. Ford yeah. also has a very yeah. similar interior yeah. to... And the all of them are getting very, very comfortable and very, you know, usable. They're so much better than older vans, I can tell you that from experience. So we have yet to drive this one. We have not driven the Bright Drop, however, he has... Had a chance to go inside of it. Yeah. But, and there are, I bet you're asking about Canoe. We had a massive video with Canoe. He drove yeah. one. And that's a much smaller van. And that's one that we do not know if it's going to go into production or not. There's there some yeah. issues. So Canoe, they have a factory in Oklahoma now. And mm -hmm. they're just trying to get it going. But their stock is going down. There's not a lot of confidence right now. Yeah. So obviously, we want everybody to succeed. By the way, this e-sprinter... 75,316. So it's creeping up to the same territory as, as the Rivian. Rivian, but yeah. it's still less expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, I would say the Bright Drop is probably the most expensive because the, the biggest battery. Yeah. Uh, then probably the Rivian, then e Sprinter, then Ford. And we don't know where Ram is on this because they promised at least to deliver some electric ProMasters. But they're not here yet. I haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Perhaps they're waiting for better battery tech to come along or something like that. It's entirely possible. I think they have electric vans in Europe, though. Yeah, I believe so, they do. So they're running around over there. Right. So there you go, guys. Uh, let us know if you have any questions about this. I think it's fascinating. But at the same time, it's a little depressing because I really would like the ability to buy one of these just for myself so I could, I don't know, convert it into a motorhome or have Alex put his motorcycles in there or whatever. So I and think that's going to be around the, the very soon. I think they'll do that. Yeah, and also uh, the other van that I would love to get my hands on and drive is the new VW Buzz. Oh. But that's slightly different from this because that's a passenger van. Although there is a cargo one in Europe. Yes, and it's a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. but also could be very expensive. I have a feeling it will be. Yeah, so that's still to come as well. So that's the latest news on electric vans all in one place right there. Yep. All right, guys. See you later.